In this short introduction to the discipline of economics, Dr. Pete Schumann presents an overview of the fundamental issues of interest to economists and how they study those issues. He defines economics as the study of how people deal with scarcity and distribute scarce resources. He highlights the two broad branches of economics, macro and micro, and explains that macroeconomics focuses on the study of the entire economy at the national and international level, while microeconomics looks at individual and firm level decision making and dynamics. He notes that economists use key concepts like opportunity cost to understand trade-offs and decision making, and that questions of interest for economists arise by thinking at the margin. I have been given the task of talking about what is economics and what do economists do. Econ 101, the first five minutes of Econ 101. Uh, so there's the Econ 101 definition. Economics is the study of how people, businesses, societies, or nations deal with scarcity. There's lots of definitions of economics. Um, if you ask 10 different economists what they do, they'd, they'd give you 10 different answers. So my favorite definition of economics is economics is what economists do. And, and, and if we go back to the first slide, you'll, you'll see that I'm, I'm pretty much done. <laughs> so I'll, I'll open it up for questions. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what do economists do? Uh, we study how people deal with scarcity, how we distribute resources. Who are these characters here? Uh, all the way on the left, that's Alfred Marshall. Uh, he's sort of the father of the supply and demand model, the market model. Uh, he wrote in the late 1800s. The guy in the middle, that's Adam Smith. Late 1700s, uh, he, he looked at um, rational self-interest and how rational, rational self-interest sort of promotes social well interests under a certain set of conditions. And who's that guy on the right? Milton Friedman, yes. Milton Friedman, perhaps the 20th century's uh, most vocal advocate for free markets. In the first day of econ, or the second day of econ, most econ students are presented with a picture that looks like this, the so-called circular flow. Uh, what do we have? We have households providing labor to businesses in exchange for incomes and wages. Businesses, in turn, provide goods and services, and households pay for those goods and services with dollars, right? So resources moving around in an economy. Right? And everybody's motivated by incentives. Uh, workers have an incentive to do good work so they get high pay. Businesses have incentives to provide quality products at low cost so that they earn profits. Right? But maybe there's something missing from that picture. Right? Where are the natural systems in this system? You can expand on the circular flow to include that. Um, but there's, there's John Crutilla in the corner <laughs> wondering if we should reconsider some of this. How do economists study all that stuff? Um, math, statistics, data, reasoning. Right? We use a lot of tools, probably the same set of tools that most people in this room use. Right? Then what? Well, we try to provide useful information, right? useful information to decision makers. We, we kind of live in the world of what ifs. Right? What might happen if? Or how did we get here? We look at cause and effect, costs and benefits of an action or an inaction, what's the best way to accomplish a particular goal. We, we use theory and data and math, statistics, to hopefully make the world a better place, help solve problems. That's what we do. Economics is supposed to be objective, as we, as we talked about a few minutes ago. Right? I like to think about it as a cold-hearted search for the truth. We don't, we don't come in typically as advocates. We're analysts, hopefully, for the most part, right? What are we advocating for? Good answers, really. I get this question uh, often, is economics a science? Um, I don't know, honestly. Uh, yes and no. If, if you think about what Karl Popper said about economics, you can, uh, about science, science is the study of things that can be falsified, right? And so yeah, do, do we try and do that? Yes. We, do we follow the scientific method? Yes. We make observa observations about the way the world works, try and think about the way the world works, theorize, collect data to test the theory, right? and then revisit the theory based on the empirical results. Right? So, but unlike some physical scientists, we don't have controlled experiments, right? just like 
uh, ecosystems, there's really only one economy, and it's hard to control everything together. So we don't have controlled experiments. It's messy. Right? We have to use the facts that are given to us that are available and, and try and use good math and good statistics to draw inference. Daniel Hausman is a philosophy professor at Wisconsin-Madison. I hope I didn't screw that up. He had a, uh, an interview in the New York Times recently, and he said, uh, and he philosophizes about uh, things related to the economy. And he said, the problems that we want economists to help solve are more like predicting how leaves will fall on a windy day than predicting how objects will fall in a vacuum. I like that. I like that analogy a lot. Right? It's messy. There's a lot of factors at play. And we analyze a subset of those factors. Are we always going to get it right? No, we're not always going to get it right. So if economics is a science, it's, it's an inexact one. So what can economists study? Uh, anything that involves decision making? Anything that involves tra trade-offs or choices? Well, well pretty much anything. Right? Pretty much anything. This is the Journal of Economic Literature classification, classification of Fields in Economics. So if you can read the font, there's, we haven't used up all the letters if you go through, but we're getting close. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're going to do when we run out of letters. Uh, but just to give you a sense of, you know, the, the discipline of economics is very broad and covers a lot of different topics. Where are we? We're, we're in, in Q, uh, Ag and Natural Resource Economics, Environmental and Ecological Economics. And if we get to talk about the difference between environmental economics and ecological economics, that's an interesting topic that perhaps we can address sometime in the next few days. All right, the two big branches, right? If, if all our disciplines are trees, uh, you go back 100 years or 200 years in our study, we were all working on the trunk. Um, as our disciplines evolve and as the state of knowledge improves, we're, we're getting out into the leaves now, right? We're all... Our, our, thesis topics, if you think about them, right? Think about your, the title of your, of your dissertation. It was probably really long and esoteric, very fine-tuned topic. Well, a long time ago, we, we, we looked at the big things. Uh, so the big branches in this tree of economics are macro and micro, right? Macroeconomics is the study of an entire economy. We look at broadly defined economic variables. None of us are macroeconomists, so we're not going to get a whole lot of this uh, this week. I have friends who are macroeconomists, and they concern themselves with forecasting. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to the regional economy in the next year? What's going to happen to the state economy in the next year? What's going to happen to the national economy in the next year? Unfortunately, this is what most people think about when they think about what an economist does. Uh, some fields in, in macroeconomics, again, monetary, international stuff. Uh, it, it's important to point out that you know, we have all these, these fields in econ, there aren't, there aren't well-defined fences around these fields. We, we kind of flow into each other. And the theory that you might use in one subdiscipline carries over and can be applied in other subdisciplines. Like Sheila said a few minutes ago, the, the, the field of development economics has a lot of micro in it, and it has a lot of macro in it as well. Microeconomics, a uh, fine-tuned look at the way people behave and interact, and trade things. An analogy that I like. If, if the economy is a forest, the macroeconomist is flying over the forest in, a, in an airplane, sort of take, getting a sense of the big picture. What does the, the whole ecosystem look like? The microeconomist is walking through the forest, looking at individual interactions between things in the forest, right? Micro fields, there are many. And again, there's, there's overlap here. But you see health, education, industrial organization, regional, labor. Demographics. Economists study all this stuff. What kind of skills do economists use? The same set of skills that you all use, I'm sure. Critical thinking, math, statistics, a lot of data analysis, a lot of technical software, and obviously writing and reporting and communication are essential. Where do economists work? I, I don't remember where I got this figure. Luckily, it's vague. <laughs> About half of all economists work for government. Other areas in, in the private sector, banking and investments, consulting, firms, NGOs, obviously academia. Uh, is everyone that studies economics an economist? No, not, not by any stretch. Um, one of the funny things about, about economics is that it's hard to do economics without graduate training um, because of the perhaps because of the math, because of the statistical analysis that's involved. Um, 
as, as undergraduates, you don't get to do economics perhaps until your senior year when you get into that econometrics course. And we, you know, if we know students are going to go to graduate school, we push them to do that earlier on so they can start doing it and seeing what it's going to be like. Um, but no, there's, there's lots of potential job opportunities for someone with an economics background. Here are some. Um, for an undergrad thinking about majoring in economics, this is exciting and scary at the same time. There's not a defined career path for those that study economics. You can really go into a lot of different areas because of the skills that you have, the skill set that you develop when studying economics. Do economists agree on everything? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of ambiguity. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a clear, cut and dry type of science, so, so no. Um, what, what do economists agree on? Well, surprisingly, a lot. Um, just some, some general things here, and we'll get into a lot of the specifics um, during the course of the week. But, okay, we agree that public policy should be designed to improve the well-being of the public. We, we agree that people respond to incentives. We agree that voluntary transactions are good. And we agree that analyzing the costs and benefits of actions and inaction gives us a lot of information about the way the world works and, and why we're, we are where we are. We'll get a lot more on this as we go along. One of the most important concepts in econ, if you could, if you could grab a hold of two or three things, right? And, and I think about this from teaching undergrads. I, I teach the first class, the Econ 101 course, to 250 or so students every semester. What do I want them to leave with? I know that most of them are not going to be economists. Most of them are not going to be econ majors. I want them to understand the idea of opportunity cost, first and foremost. That's probably the biggest thing, right? Um, what is that? Tin staffel. There is no such thing as a free lunch. That's, that's, that's what that means. That's the idea of opportunity cost. There's no such thing as a free lunch, right? Even though it might not involve money out of your pocket, every action that you engage in involves some kind of opportunity cost. You're giving up something. This is because of scarce resources. What resources are scarce? All of them, right? Our time, our energy, our incomes, our natural resources, all scarce, right? All limited in supply. Second most important concept, I think, uh, and, and Sheila and Jim might, might, might add to this or disagree, but, but being able to think at the margin, being able to think about change as being incremental right, rather than absolute. 